What's going on, Melon Farmers? DMAC back with a little video here after what happened between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens and what happened between the Winnipeg Jets and the Edmonton Oilers with the sweep and the Game 7. I thought it would be fun to do a little playoff round 2 simulation. We'll go times 8 simulation and let's see what's going to happen between the Montreal Canadiens and the Winnipeg Jets. Let's go start playoffs. All right, so let's not dilly-dally. Let's just dive right into game one. We'll go to times eight simulation and see what happens. And oh my God, in the first minute, Paul Stasny scores on the first shot of the playoffs for Winnipeg. Now let's see if Montreal's got an answer. They got a power play. The shots are actually, uh, well, they weren't, yeah, the shots are favoring Montreal, but Winnipeg. Oh, Eric Stahl gets one past Connor Hellebuck. And it's all tied up. And Cole, Cole, Cole Caulfield <laughs> scores near the end of the first period. Oh, my lordy. Here we go, man. Oh, let's go. Second period. Shots are 11 to 9, 12 to 10. Holy crap. Amoli looks like Montreal is kind of outplaying Winnipeg, but they got a power play. And Montreal is able to kill it off. So, oh, Brett Kulak gets it in around the halfway point of game one to make it three to one for the Montreal Canadiens. My goodness, four to one. It's Brendan Gallagher. Could this just be some game one luck? What is happening? Oh, Winnipeg is out shooting Montreal 19 to 18, but it looks like Carey Price is standing on his head yet again in the freaking playoffs. Let's get the third period started, and let's get it over and done with here. Game one of round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And it looks like Montreal's going to just walk away with it here. Holy crap a moly. All right, final ten minutes of the game. Game one. I couldn't believe when I was watching, when I was watching game seven between Montreal and Toronto, I'm like, man, Toronto does not want this at all. <laughs> I was like, there's no urgency, like the top line just continued to not do anything. You can see as well, and by the way, Montreal takes game one by a score of 4-1. to one. But you can see when William Nylander scored that goal right at the end of the game, you could see the frustration in his eyes where it was like, man, like, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> like, I'm playing well. Anyway, let's jump into game number two. Here we go. Times eight simulation and let's get after it. And again, first shot of the game for Winnipeg goes in. It looks like they came out absolutely flying in this one. And it's 2-0, Nate friggin' Thompson. And then in the simula or in the on the power play, they're unable to get it done. But holy crap a moly, dude. They're living on the power play. And Cole Caulfield puts another one in. The shots are 20 to 6. Holy crap, 21 to six of the shots in favor of the Winnipeg Jets. What is Montreal gonna do here? Let's get the second period going, man. Three to one, Blake Wheeler puts another one in. But Montreal gets a power play right back, and oh my God, this is a one-sided freaking game when it comes to shooting, when it comes to scoring, but then Brendan Gallagher gets another one back. We're at the halfway point here, and oh my goodness. Looks like Montreal's not quite out of it yet, man. They already got a 1-0 series lead. Let's see if they can pull ahead 2-0 or if Winnipeg is going to tie the series up and really make things interesting going into Montreal for Game 3. Third period, let's do it. All right, early on, Montreal gets the power play and Tatar scores at, to make it 3-3 as the power play expires and they get another one. Oh my goodness. The shots are 40-20 to frickin 20 for Winnipeg and it's a tie damn game. <laughs> so again, like I said before, it looks like Price is standing on his head. Oh my goodness. None of this last minute of the game crap. And 45 to 27 of the final shots after 60 minutes. And in game two, we're going to overtime. So here we go, man. First overtime and Montreal comes out swinging with a ton of shots early. And what is going to happen? Is this overtime going to take a long time or is it going to be over quick? Winnipeg is kind of famous this year for going to long OTs, but they are able to get the 51st shot of the game into the net to make it 4-3. to three. We got a tie series, everybody. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Back to the main menu where Brendan Gallagher has two goals and an assist in two games played to lead round two. And here we go into Montreal, baby. Let's go. Game three. 
times eight simulation and let's see what happens. Both goalies get off to a better start. Well, I mean, the Montreal goalie gets off to a better start. Carey Price does not allow the first goal or the first shot to go in. And early, it's a 2 nothing lead for Montreal. It looks like these teams are going back and forth, being utterly dominant right off the hop. It's like one or the other is going to just absolutely take over right off the hop. So Shea Weber on the power play, Cole Caulfield on the power play, and it looks like Winnipeg's penalty kill is a little lacking in this series right now. Let's get into the second period of Game 3 where Montreal looks like they want to take a 2-1 to -one series lead over the Winnipeg Jets, but what is going to happen? Is Winnipeg going to have an answer? Another power play for Montreal. It's killed off. Power play for Winnipeg. It's killed off. It's a goalie show here for Carey Price. Oh my goodness, man. Another power play for Montreal. Holy crap, a moly, man. <laughs> 2 nothing entering the third. Here we go. Game three. And Kyle Connor finally gets Winnipeg on the boards. And Montreal gets another power play. Winnipeg with another power play. And it's killed off. Now it's tied at two and Paul Stasny puts it home. He's got a couple in these playoffs now are we going to overtime for the second game in a row no winnipeg takes a three to two lead in the late third period and is montreal going to answer no they're not paul stasny with the empty netter gives winnipeg a two to one series lead and they take a win in montreal good for them let's jump ahead to game number four where it's a 2-1 to one series lead for the Winnipeg Jets. And Paul Stasny now leads the playoffs with three goals and an assist for four points. Times eight simulation. Let's keep on keeping on here. Oh, what is going to happen later on? And Brett Kulak again gets a goal past Hellebuck. I think he got the first goal in like... No, he got, he got one of the first goals in game one. Power play killed off by the Winnipeg Jets. Let's just go another power play for the Montreal Canadiens. Again, killed off by the Jets. A lot, low, a lot of, uh, lower shot totals here uh, as we get to game four. So now let's jump into the second period where Montreal had a 2-0 lead in the last game. And boom, Brendan Gallagher makes it a 2-0 lead. But Winnipeg got it back late. So let's see if that becomes a trend in this series. Oh my goodness. Is Montreal going to be able to tie it or is Winnipeg going to get back? Nope, that power play is killed off. But Winnipeg is out shooting Montreal, not by too much at this point. Another power play for the Canadians, and I believe it is killed off after two. Shots are 19 to 16 for Winnipeg, 2 0 Montreal. But this is where the magic happens for Winnipeg. They came back late in the last game. Are they going to come back late again here in game four in the third period? Let's go. We're almost five minutes. Yep, we're five minutes into it. Still nothing. Still nothing. Can Montreal hold them off in game four to tie the series at two? Oh my goodness. Here we go. Come on. Is Winnipeg going to come back at all? Or is Carey Price going to get a playoff shutout? <laughs> what are we looking at? Last minute of the game. And it's a two to nothing victory for the Montreal Canadiens. Carey Price with a 33 shot shutout. In game four of the second round, it's a 2-2 series tie. This is a tight one, and Brendan Gallagher is now tied with Paul Stasny for the playoff lead. Identical three goals, one assist. Not too shabby, man. Let's go to simulate. Let's get into game five. Back in Winnipeg. What is going to happen now? Montreal. Oh, it's, shots are one nothing. Five minutes in, <laughs> and Brendan Gallagher scores again. This is a really low shooting game. It looks like the defense came to play tonight, man. But now the shots are starting to pick up a little bit, and Nate Thompson ties it 1-1 near the end of the first period. Not, uh, Winnipeg finally has 10 shots. I was going to say uh, no team has 10 shots on goal, but Winnipeg gets their shots 10-9 to Winnipeg, 1-1 to after 1. Let's go, second period. Oh my goodness there. I had to stop and take a little sippy poo there. So Winnipeg gets a power play. Montreal kills it off and Toffoli gets a goal immediately after. Winnipeg on the power play. Montreal able to kill it off. Okay, so this is a much tighter game now, right? The scores, the shot, everything is very, very tight. And Morrissey, Josh Morrissey ties it on the power play. We're entering the third period with relatively similar shot totals and a 2-2 game. All right, what happens next? Winnipeg gets a power play early. It's killed off. Montreal gets a power play early. It's killed off. Holy crap. All right, man, we're just about to enter the final 10 minutes of this game. Still 2-2. Another power play for Winnipeg. It's killed off. 
So Winnipeg is really out shooting Montreal every night and Trevor Lewis puts in the goal to make it 3-2 and Winnipeg takes a 3-2 series lead dramatically outplaying the Montreal Canadiens throughout this entire series really. Uh, but Montreal is still in it. We're at a game six. We're in Montreal now. Can they come back and force another Game 7 here? Brendan Gallagher still leading the playoffs in this round with 5 points in 5 games. Here we are, Game 6. Can Oh no, Nikolai Ehlers gets his first of the friggin' series and Kylie Connor, but caught Kaniemi, KK gets one back. So it's a 2-1 game. Now it's a 3-1 game. Adam Lowry puts in one and Gallagher scores again <laughs> to make it 3-2. Oh my goodness, man. Everything's going in the net in game six. <laughs> and that's going to kill the first period. Jumping into the second. Here we go, man. Here we go. Second period, 3-2 to two Winnipeg, game six. The whole series is on the line. Is Montreal going to rally? Power play for Winnipeg. And it's killed off, but Shifley scores right as that power play ends. So we're uh, nearing the end of the second period. That carry price that showed up for pretty much every game this series seems to be uh, kind of vacant in this one. Third period begins. Is this it for the Montreal Canadiens? Power play for Winnipeg and it's killed off. Another power play for Winnipeg and it's killed off. Oh my goodness. Montreal, can they make a comeback? Or is Winnipeg going to advance to the third round of the Stanley Cup playoffs? And it kind of looks like it. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Final minute. 5-2, to two, Blake Wheeler puts in an empty net. So, the game says, Jets in 6. Mark Shifley, Stanley Cup champions, Winnipeg Jets. Well, I don't know about that, but it was just one round. <laughs> oh, man. I, I uh, You know what? I could see this happening, regardless. I could see it happening where the Jets take out Montreal in 6. I could totally see it happening where Montreal takes out the Jets in seven. I could see them taking out the Jets in six. It, it could go either way. This is one of those series where it's like, the Jets should have it, but the Leafs should have had it, right? And it's like, you know, the Oilers should have beat the Jets, but Toronto should have beat Montreal. So it's one of those, th it's very open-ended. I don't know what I think. But it says here, Winnipeg takes out the Montreal Canadiens in six games. Montreal should hold their head up high considering that uh, there wasn't really a whole lot of expectation for Montreal after they started falling off the map there at the beginning of the season. Anyway, I wonder, I want to know what you guys think of this. Do you agree with this simulation? Do you disagree with the simulation? Let me know in the comments below. Regardless, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for new videos coming all the freaking time. And until next time, you beautiful melon farmers, have a good one.